and see what happens. Boop. Fire brimstone. It's always fire and brimstone with you, man. I'm like, Pedro, today everything's going great. We got everything organized. We're on time. We're starting. Pedro, oh, ah. Nihilist can dream. What? <laughs> and we're live. Hey, man. All nihilists can dream. Ah, oh, I didn't get a notification. I think I even left my tablet on intentionally because I know I brought the damn thing down here. <laughs> hey, beautiful people. Oh, snap. Indeed. Getting ready for some Linux weekly, daily Wednesdays. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. I think we, we were talking about cars. We got it out of our system. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, to some people's chagrin. <laughs> but oh, I'm sure Strider is thankful. Not that he, he'll ever admit it. Oh, no. Although we're man. about to find out. I mean, if... <laughs> we didn't talk about cars for a few months you'd be like oh why are you talking about cars anymore yeah oh yeah. now i know i know i got my live notification i heard that <laughs> echo throughout it was a bit late yeah uh, a minute and 19 seconds but then again it's youtube so you never know what you're gonna get surprisingly colorful then <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Brown jacket. Brown jacket. <laughs> this is the bizarro moon universe we live in, where like dark muted shades of brown is like, oh, too much color, man. You, you got to tone <laughs> that down. Nah, man, it's uh, high definition graphics. When <laughs> games were touting high definition graphics, everything was brown. <laughs> I was um, well, high definition pixel graphics. That bit really pisses me off. They need to be uh, but then again, I don't like the filters. Yeah, it's always so backwards because everyone with their NESs are trying to get the high def NES kits to get the super mm -hmm. sharp pixels. Yeah. Like, why? Why, why? why? What's wrong with you? It doesn't make any sense because the developers made the pixels like that because they were accounting for the fact that you had a stupid CRT TV with scan lines right, right. going up and down the thing all the time. Mm -hmm. So. You couldn't see the pixels. It was just like blurry bits of light on the screen. That's it. Great. I don't have... Well, I don't think there's any way to... No. I, I don't have a way to show it. Uh, I have a CRT down here in like one of those old entertainment centers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with an NES, which I'm not sure any of that works, but it's... <laughs> it's there. <laughs> it, it looks like it's like, yeah, that's my retro gaming console system as opposed to uh, that's a bunch of old shit i ain't throw it away yet um all right apparently mm. rohit had issues finding the stream but i think he found it now uh does ven know it doesn't rain inside i don't know he's right there you can ask him directly darling I don't see the webcam pointing at Ven's roof. <laughs> I think people want a weather cam, Ven. Oh. No. No, we'll see what we can work out. Eh, would be nice to have a weather cam if uh, there is another big lightning storm like there was uh, a few weeks after we moved here. It was almost down in London. But you could see it from here. That's how big it was. Well, what was it? Um, Tuesday. Wait, no, Monday when that storm. I didn't even go outside. I had stuff needed doing, but. <laughs> yeah, I, I was... You wanted to do the irresponsible thing and just stand outside in the middle of a tropical storm. Oh, man, I had my golf clubs ready and everything. Uh, <laughs> it, it was Nothing like actual catching it, but yeah, it was bad, man. So it we we had a beautiful alternating um, thing of the power going out versus the internet being up. Mm -hmm. They could never quite <laughs> sync, so the power would come back on, then the internet would go down, then the internet would come back up, but the power would go back off, and 
At some point, you just give up and you go lay down on the couch and put on podcast. And it's like, eh, yeah, this at is that point, you go, okay, is the 3G still technically workable that I can read something on Reddit? Nope. LTE only <laughs> works upstairs at the top deck of the house in the right quarter. <laughs> Doesn't have to be LTE, just 3G. That's fine. And I was, oh, geez, man. I mean, we, we were getting wind gusts. 40 something uh, freedom units an hour so around seven no it's not is too much uh 60 something 50 60 something kilometers an hour oh everyone <laughs> that GIF was well looped. Eh, I think we can move that up a little bit, can't we? Burp. Uh, 1906. 1906. That's GMT minus one. Where are you, Gnarly? <laughs> are you in the Azorian Islands? I'm pretty sure that's the only place in the world... Oh, uh, maybe there's a teeny tiny tip of uh, Iceland. Quite that possibly. might be GMT minus one. Uh. <laughs> Strider was complaining about that on Saturday. <laughs> It's just the window positioning. I gotta play around with it. <laughs> yeah, it's the buffer. It's the delay, man. It's a system we sold out. I was having oh, Reykjavik. Reykjavik. Well, you need to say hello to Jordan next week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that should still be lined up. Capital of Iceland. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Oh, it's an eight hour and 40 minute flight from Cambridge. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, apparently that. No, I just Googled for it and Google now gives me the uh, flight information. <laughs> it's almost as if Google knows that I've flown recently at some point over the past two months. I got upset with Google because I watched some American Civil War documentary because why not I'm going to bed right yeah <laughs> man YouTube thinks I'm all about some Civil War right now <laughs> that is all my recommended stuff like stop there needs to be a button it's like that, that was <laughs> like, a one time okay, I get it you're right. stalking me just stop it's just like that was a one time thing all right <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I, every now and again uh, on YouTube, I'll watch that one video that may or may not have some political implications. And then I just get inundated by the recommendations off to decide. It's like, oh, no, political stuff all the way down. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> I found, uh, I think I found the single most um, inoffensive channel on YouTube. Which is a dude that Pew. takes, uh, no, 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 no. A dude that takes uh, red line Hot Wheel cars, like the old ones, and restores them. And he speaks in a completely monotone voice. He never well, really changes. Well, that's his the voice. new thing everyone <laughs> needs to be. See, they want to listen to people who do podcasts that sound like them because they're jacked up on Adderall. <laughs> well, that explains why people don't like or people on Linux underscore gaming don't like us. Oh, no, I mean, it's not their fault. I mean, it's 
they got bad parents. You know, they don't want to teach them parenting and, you know, teach the kids. What's so. that? Having um, opinions of your own? Voicing those opinions? Nah. <laughs> Individuality is overrated. All right. I think we are about. And I finally, I completely missed that thread. Uh, the latest one about people asking about Linux gaming podcasts and i finally read through it and yeah the dude totally says that uh the stoner uh needs to shut up because uh just expelling gases on stream isn't really a good thing arthur and uh, that's a uh, behringer you can see it right there xenix 802 that's the one we've been using since the beginning we've And then he says that the Canadian is all right. So at which point did Jordan become two different people and I don't exist? <laughs> so either I'm the Pedro, stoner and I'm annoying. seriously, man, it's fucking 14-year-olds going re. <laughs> Why would know. you I'm apply kind of curious. I'm genuinely any curious. thought? It's like, oh, that's cute. Next. So I'm the Canadian? I don't know and or care. <laughs> well, I'm curious. <laughs> you, you you go be curious. You go be curious over the air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I just can't imagine the shit storm we're going to get with South Park this year. Pedro doesn't Did watch South say... Park. He's confused. <laughs> no, it's just that uh, I remember reading uh, that South Park wasn't really making fun of Trump because they couldn't. Because Trump was just making a mockery of himself so bad that there was nothing that they could do. Well, it's an analog, Arthur, and so we, we got one, two, four Dax running through it. absolutely would not look at any setup that we have here <laughs> unless you're doing a show and go hmm i'll have me some of that it's like i want to manage all of my uh audio streams through a physical mixer oh oh no no okay, no, no, no get that's... some decks <laughs> pedro that, that's just to get all everybody at the same party then you crack open <laughs> pavu control after you get everyone there and that's no, then you start, uh, you don't crack open Pavo Control just yet. You go on the terminal, you spawn a couple of virtual streams to combine certain streams, and then you go to Pavo Control and you adjust that. <laughs> if you want to make it even more complicated. More complicated is best, but complicated, man. What are you talking about? It's also one way to get around if you don't have a physical mixer. Uh and you're you want to capture audio from two different sources but the application that you're trying to use only spawns one recording stream like say audacity mm, if you say so you can <laughs> you could spawn multiple instances or trick audacity into spawning multiple instances that are capable of, of recording but uh you could run two PACMD uh, commands. Pedro one... does all this, and I just put one stream on a left channel, one stream on a right channel. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, there's also <laughs> that uh, slight cheat. <laughs> That's why I get shit done, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> if you, let's say you want to preserve stereo for some reason. <laughs> I have to walk away with a slight win. <laughs> All right, I think I'm going to get something to drink, and we're going to get on with this business. All right, go ahead and get your drink. Yeah, I need a refill as well. Can't you reach? No. <laughs> <laughs> Living room is not that small. It's pretty small, but it's not that small. <laughs> I, all right. Uh, but yeah, no, it was... Um... It was a genuinely confusing thread all the way through, and I completely missed it. Uh, usually when I see, like, certain requests 
my eyes just filter them and I don't see them anymore. Uh, so I guess that was one of them. But then Jordan started talking about it and Ven talked about it. So it's like, okay, fine, I'll go read it. I don't get it. Uh, Katana, the AT2020 are stereo mics. So, yeah. <laughs> if you only have the mono mic, yeah, then you don't need to preserve mono, uh, you don't need to preserve stereo because you don't have it. But yeah, no, these uh, AT2020s are stereo mics. Not that you would know because Ven always muxes everything down to mono, but yeah. Saves on the bandwidth and allows for better volume control using just the one stream, for instance. Let's see. And uh, there will be a review soon, probably not this week. But uh, hopefully next week there will be a new hardware review coming, so <laughs> keep your eyes open. And I'm not entirely sure when the next one will be, but it will be soon as well. And... Uh, have any of you bought that RTS, uh, Hipster Pixel RTS with the cats and the mice and the warthogs and whatnot? Uh, what's it called? The tail and... Fur, fur and tail? No. What's it called? The new one. Everyone's talking about it. Big one. Came out on Linux recently. Because I looked at it, it's like, oh, look, it's a hipster pixel RTS. But people are saying that it's really, really, really good. So I don't know. Boop. Boop. Okay, my turn. I'll be back. Behringer is very nice. Mm. They make good stuff for the price. They do. Cold equals sleepy. Should have got some tea. Um, man. MPV for the win. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm not entirely sure if VLC, the uh, command line option for VLC, has that, uh, has a no video option. Well, no, but it's got a minimize button. Yeah. <laughs> that's one of the things that's going to be more viable when we get the uh, digital mixer, because right now it's just too much of a... Yeah. Tooth and Tail, yes, that's the game. That's the one. I heard about that. Um, is it's a hipster that... pixel RTS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was my reaction exactly. It's like, oh shit, people are actually saying really nice things about this game. Okay, we're gonna go. Oh. Uh. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, I. All right, I'll send you an email anyway. Uh. Right. That I was more interested in. Why does this get so much hype behind it? Mm hmm. <laughs> what is this thing? All right. I guess maybe, well, I'm not terribly interested in it, so we'll definitely end up playing it. Um, <laughs> Probably. <yeah. laughs> it's not as fun as the Rage platformer we're playing this week. 
Oh yeah, I uh, redeemed the key. I looked at it on the store and said, "Oh God." <laughs> You, uh, mm. No, no spoilers yet. <laughs> no, no, no spoilers. Ah. All right, I think we can get into it. <sighs> I got to clean up these sources on opiates. <laughs> it just reads like me getting mad. <laughs> with the naming conventions before I figured out a way to stop it from being stupid. All right, let's see. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, sit back and prepare for incoherent Linux news with none of that pesky accuracy. It's overrated. So, are you leading off? Up oh, sure. Okay. Yep. Take two. All right. That's it. Go. We are the 3%. Chrome is coming to your USB devices. Debian goes to Wayland. And Gnome. It's going to Manchester. Mm, let's go. Out in three, two. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, and take that midweek break to have a chat about what's going on in the world of penguins, Linux. What's what's the right way to say it, man? Because I don't like saying welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays followed by... Uh, as I've taken to saying it, it's uh, GNU plus lit... No. 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 <laughs> oh, oh, man, I better... I need to reinforce the window down here in case Stallman jumps through it and <laughs> strangles me. It's like, that's just too much. Just beats me to death with this new glass table, man. It'd be kind of yep. brilliant. Um, before we get into it, man, what's going on in um, Northumbria today? Uh, well, uh, a lot of cold. Well, at least colder than it used to be. It's, uh, let's, let's put it into context. Where I used to live, uh, while I was still living at my parents, uh, it would be around this temperature in the winter. And it's still technically the summer here. So, yeah. Ooh. A bit chillier than usual. <laughs> did, did it normally snow in Portugal? Not on the coast. Uh, but... No, uh, not on the coast, and there's only like one place that's uh, at a high enough altitude to uh, actually get some snow. <laughs> so you'd be running around the streets crying, like, what is this? No! Yeah. <laughs> hey, but um, speaking of what is this, what is this? Uh, these are numbers about desktop operating system shares. Yes, yes they are, and if you scroll all the way down to August 2017... You see that Windows is at 90.70%, Mac has dropped to 5.94%, and Linux is up from 253 to 337%. Now, this is odd in a number of ways. Uh, it's a big jump from last time, because when we last talked about it, we were, uh, it was the jump from, uh, let's see, yes, it was from May to June 2016, which it jumped from 1.79 to 202. And then it hang around two, it came up, it came down, the usual. But now, here we are, August 2017, just finished, and we're up by a sizable chunk. It, uh, I can't remember who it was that did an article that said it, we basically doubled the uh, market share according to netmarketshare.com from September 2015 
to August 2017. Hmm. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I've definitely been looking at it. And over the years, um, you got to definitely remember all the hubbub of just getting to 1% and 2%. And we do this tracking on the highly inaccurate, unreliable <laughs> Steam surveys on our Saturday show. <laughs> yeah. But... All right, it seemed like a lot of people were sitting back, like, where do they get these numbers and what's responsible for such a massive, massive spike in it? Well, ladies and gentlemen, my bad. I keep looking for a camera that's been here for five years <laughs> and it's over here. So you'll, you'll have to deal with me. Um, uh, yeah, I built a new box and I had to reinstall Linux a few times. So that probably... Uh, Yes, yes, you're done with your Linux crap. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. It's definitely a thing. That's good to see. Uh, what does it mean? I don't know. I, I want to know how they got their metrics, ultimately, because... Uh, they have that. If you uh, actually have a look through the sidebar, they have that. Now, what I couldn't uh, figure out was uh, your suggestion was Chromebooks. So I actually went looking, okay, so can I split Chrome OS from Linux, all the rest of Linux? new at least not that i could find if anyone can find that let me know and uh let us know the actual numbers hmm. well yeah. um one number is 61 that's chrome and it's got uh, javascript modules and web usb support and that should rightfully terrify you right booga booga run uh, well it's not even about the booga booga but yes there's plenty of bo booga booga to be had you're quite literally exposing your usb devices to chrome to the internet do you trust Google that much? Because yep. I, I'm not entirely sure I do. Hey, man, I, I signed on the dotted line years ago. It's just... <laughs> Look, I know uh, I've pretty much also sold my soul to Google. I use an Android phone. Uh, I use Chrome all the time. But when you expose your entire USB uh, paraphernalia that you happen to have laying around to the web, I'm not entirely sure I trust Google on that. Mm. And I No... Not by default, please. And I also, uh, one of the things that they mentioned in the article is the uh, the device RAM API is now available, exposing the amount of RAM on a user's device to sites to optimize overall performance of a web application. Remember how lately uh, Chrome has actually been doing a pretty good job of not springing a leak when it comes to memory? Well, that that's all going away. You can basically logically follow the crumbs on this. Is it? Because why would you want applications in a web page? Well, speaking of Chromebooks, maybe Chrome <laughs> OS. And that's how you're going to be loading that business. Uh, and I do believe the article is 100% right. That this, yes, this will be exploited. I don't know for mm -hmm. to what extent and for what use, but yeah, I, what do you think, P-Man? Uh, outside of... Chromebooks. Are... I mean, what use? Well, you could literally take control of a box because I've... nowadays everyone's got the USB keyboard, USB external hard drives, tons, tons of things connected to USB webcams. Uh, it's no, I don't like that. Google should by default keep access to all USB devices disabled. You don't get it unless you specifically say that you do. Same way that it handles uh, microphones and cameras with WebRTC nowadays. I don't know, man. I mean, it's kind of like cheat mode for the NSA. Hashtag high NSA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I all uh, kind of agree with... Well, I, 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 I got the feels on what you're saying with, okay, let's not make it that easy for Google to mine and mm -hmm. track more data. But... And I've already done the thing. And if you're <laughs> concerned about your privacy, good luck. Yes, not using I have products. two Android devices and <laughs> two NVIDIA Shield tablets on that couch over there. So, yeah, <laughs> right. I know. <laughs> it is definitely one of those things. But not to be left out, um, Firefox 57 is getting rid of that dang old search bar. And it's going to use a unibar, which is not a unibrow, is it? No, nay. Um, it's okay. Uh, it was the one distinctive feature nowadays when it came to Firefox. Oh, that and everything being single-threaded by default. Well, I mean, the only yeah. thing that was still using the search bar was Vivaldi. Everybody else has switched out to 
just the basic thing. And that was one of the things I originally didn't like about Chrome was not having my little search box over there. But I got used to it, and you know, I always use the drop-down menu for my bookmarks and all that fun stuff. And in Firefox 57, it's also going to drop support for add-ons that were built using the legacy API. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't wait for that nightmare to explode. Yeah, so I'm not entirely sure that this is the uh, feature that'll stop Microsoft's uh, sizable market market share loss that they've been having for the past however many months. I don't think getting rid or getting rid of extensions and unifying the um, the two bars at the top is what's going to save them. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> I... I don't know. I mean, we should point out that this is something that you can enable and disable. So, yes, there's that. I mean, there's not much to it, but we thought we'd give it a mention. Yeah. But, <laughs> what do we got? It's what just that, why now? I do, I do have that question. Why now? They could have done it when Chrome went, oh, look, we're the market share leaders when it comes to desktop browsers now. Here's the real then. question, man, is is Firefox just going to permanent from now on be second place? Probably. I mean Well, third edge still comes as default in every single uh Windows box, so I, that's going to be I, I don't know. I don't even think Microsoft can get I mean they are they are trying to shoe hoard it's like use edge. And people are actively... <laughs> it comes by default, and a lot of people just won't change it. So, yeah, it will be number two. Mm. Don't underestimate the power of stupid people in large quantities. And right now, there's a Opera user screaming. <laughs> what do you mean? And, but, and Use Vivaldi. Seriously, if you're that Opera user, Vivaldi. Yeah, you might as well. They're all using Chromium for the back end anyway. Yeah. It's definitely a thing. Um. We touched on Waylon last week, and it seems like the fine, fine, fine people at Debian are um, talking about it too, man. They're thinking about uh, switching these development builds over to Waylon. Indeed. Uh, so the you may want to kind of ignore the um, <clears throat> the source on that article and find the actual uh, source uh, in our show notes, which uh, is the. Um, the change log for Debian, the upcoming one, whatever it is, and they're going to be bringing GNOME session 3.24.1-2, which has a very noticeable change, which is they are enabling Wayland by default. The GNOME session for Debian, if you're downloading the, uh, the GNOME ISO, will use uh, Wayland by default. That's... It's not as big as, say, Fedora, because Fedora does have the main uh, desktop, the main ISO that they curate, which is the GNOME one. Mm -hmm. Debian has always been much more open. No, you, you can download Debian with whichever uh, desktop you want, and they give you the options for all of that in the exact same page that they give you the GNOME one. So it's not as big uh, or as noticeable an impact as it was with Fedora, but it's Debian. It's the Debian, you know, the one we keep making fun of because they're it's Debian stale. Remember? Hey, no, uh, they're uh, adopting Wayland. <laughs> well, I mean, you can say that, but I mean, they might as well. I mean, it, if you're going to finally adopt the 3.0 kernel, um, <laughs> I kid because yeah, I they're love. They're using 4.10 um, now. <laughs> no, uh, it's good. Wayland is the future. It is. Do you hear me, Nvidia? Seriously, mm -hmm. let's get on those binary drivers and let's make it a thing. Let, let's get it some momentum to sitting back. That's definitely one thing you can say about the um, Radeon open source drivers is... The only you, ones that matter, yes. Yeah, you, you're just seeing compatibility and progress on that. So, yeah. mm. I mean, to be fair, there's a lot of overlap between the people who are developing Wayland and even X uh, and the people who are actively contributing to Mesa. Uh, AMD did hire a few people to work specifically on the open source drivers to try and as hard as they can to get rid of that ugly shim that they call the AMD GPU Pro driver. Mm -hmm. It's just 
you can label FGLRX whatever you like, AMD. I know better. Trust me. It's definitely a thing. I mean, I would like to get, see it sorted. I want to play with Wayland. I finally got this box up and running to the point where I think we're going to be able to just get everything nice, nice and smooth and get everything done. I haven't launched Wayland yet. It's on here. It's like yeah, everything mm-hmm. will explode, <laughs> which I know. I know logically it won't, but... Um, oh, I, and apparently Debian is running 4.11, not 4.10. My bad. Ooh, <laughs> look at you. We can't make the jokes anymore. It's not funny. But Wayland, uh, the only reason I noticed I had Wayland installed was uh, because I had installed something else. Not, not the latest and greatest, but it is out. And that is Gnome 3.26 Manchester Edition. Um couple of new things in this we have color emojis finally long national <laughs> nightmare over yes you see it right there on the screen improved Someone search was trying to capitalize on a certain announcement by a certain company yeah new looks for the settings and that the gnome browser it can now use firefox sync got a bonus soda with that 100 percent. and it's called epiphany call it what it is it's epiphany new display <laughs> settings include a preview version for that high DPI UHD monitor that you might want to play around with. And my favorite, not to be forgotten, Tweak Tool has been renamed to just Tweaks. Not Tweak, Tweaker, just Tweaks. Um, yeah, that's the thing, man. 3.26 currently available right now at your um, neighborhood store. Uh, um, I, I installed the current version, the previous version. Before three two six, and three twenty four, three twenty four. This is like, okay. Let's see where Gnome's at. Last time I used Gnome, it was on um, Solaris. So that <laughs> Gnome two point two something. Yeah, we, we still had the big, yeah. big, big chunky foot down there. <laughs> I installed it, played around with. It. This is way, way too contained of an experience for me. Too unified. It's like, ooh, I was getting some bad Mac vibes, and. Gnome developers, what the holy heck? You you installed a plugin in all of my browsers. <laughs> yes. You did. Yes, and I can't just right click on it and delete it because it's grayed out. Yeah, you need to get rid of it through the package manager. That, that that's next level. Like, wow, that, that's Microsoftian type stuff right there. That's not what I would expect. But uh, hopefully it, it will be another decade before I use Gnome. But good on them. Yeah. Good on them. Uh, I know some people like their gnomes, and I, what uh, we don't have unity anymore. Thank you, flying spaghetti monster. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, you, we we still had to have the one HUD based uh, desktop environment. Mm-hmm. So that's gnome. So that's the new whipping boy. I hate gnome. Eh, I, competition is good. Katie <laughs> needs. Oh yeah, Katie against, needs and... a kick in the shins, right. like really bad. So... Yeah, I will never poo-poo on any of these projects whatsoever, unless it's this one, because this, this one's just made me sad, because I, I use OpenShot every single week, multiple times. For a moment there, you thought it was all right, didn't you? Well, you know, if you follow me on the social medias, I was like, hmm, this is borderline usable. We're talking about 2.4, with a focus on stability. OpenShot, non-linear video editor. I use 1.4 because it does it has this neat feature that the 2X series does, and it's called working. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the, this is uh, still a big old pile of nope. This is from Umg Ubuntu. They, they have a little thing where you can install oh, it, God. you know, with your PPAs and all that. All this business will be available in our show notes. I highly suggest not adding a PPA. Nay. Uh, it's available as an app image on their web zone if you want to try it. That way you don't have to worry about too much when you want to install it because <laughs> you will. It, here's some things, man. It it doesn't show me timestamps on video clips. So, Wasn't that a thing that the other one did? Uh, everything 1.4? does that. Yeah. <laughs> you need but that no, too. it shows you the waveform on the, uh, uh, on the streams, doesn't it? The, the, this is an option. Okay, if you want to generate a waveform from the actual clip, video's not too bad on a Ryzen 1700 clocked at 3.8 gigahertz on an NVMe drive. It only mm-hmm. takes about a minute, which is ridiculous. But that that I, I can handle this. I can handle this. 
the wave file to generate a waveform just to kind of match them up. Um, two, just two two and a half <laughs> to three minutes. For, <laughs> uh, and I don't know what it's doing. I, I can't decipher what it's doing. I quit caring what it was doing and decided, no, this, this is just not a usable piece of kit. The uh, title, if it has Blender integration, if you wanted to do custom titles and stuff like that, it's still limited to five fonts. Okay. There's uh, no reason behind At this that. point, uh, did people just give up? Because you think that that would be the first thing that someone would mod. I I don't know. I, I think maybe it is also slightly better at scrubbing through video before the previous release. It was a nightmare fuel, but I think the improvement from that is simply just the NVMe drive with the 1700 Ryzen system. Yeah. Making you have the single-threaded performance and you have the reason rights to back it up. Yeah, and I hate to say this, I've been playing around a lot more with Katie in live. And listen, open shot. Um, I know it's a, <laughs> You're walking on thin ice. I'm saying this because I love you. I'm saying this because I use your product. And <laughs> this 2.0 stuff, I mean, it, like, we also need to focus on our Mac and Windows builds of it. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. No, that, that was a bad idea. And um, yeah, this 2.0 stuff. It, it's regression. It's still not a usable product almost two years after release. And uh, After that Kickstarter. If you have a diehard OpenShot fan like myself, like, yeah, I think I'm going to go back to Katie and Live. Because Katie and Live bit me like five years ago. I, I lost a massive project to it, and I, I might be going back to that. So we got a little bit of distro news this week. Ah, yes. Well, very, very tiny. Uh, which is uh, the beautiful Nitrix Linux distro could be a contender. So uh, Jack Wallen wrote this story for Linux.com, and it's basically a uh, he took Nitrix for a spin in VirtualBox. Uh, Nitrix is it's different from other distros in the way that it doesn't use native applications for the most part. It uses containers. Snaps, to be more specific, because it's Ubuntu-based. It's a snap Ubuntu-based distro. Okay, if that doesn't have you running for the hills, <laughs> it should. But the the idea of a container-based distro isn't exactly new. You had the CoreOS, Rancher OS, and so on. They've been around for a while. They've been using containers of one form or another. Hey, man, and it includes just... Android apps. Yes, uh, because it's using uh, Android Box or NBox. No, no, Pedro. Uh, it, it's a distribution. I would have to format my system in order to use Android apps. Oh, yeah, no. You you need to completely format and uh, factory reset your SSDs, remake the RAID, and then you can change your theme. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, the, this isn't exactly new. There have been distros around for a while that did uh, containerized uh, a containerized experience. This is just happens to be the one that is Ubuntu based and use uses snaps. Why you'd want to load your system with containerized apps over their native versions is a use case which eludes me. Uh, you know, outside of just oh look, it's neat. Let me test that. Testing purposes. That's it. <laughs> and I... listen, there's something to be said about neat, Pedro. <laughs> sure, there we have an would entire have segment been dedicated a time. to neat. <laughs> in my youth where this would have gotten installed all right i'm just gonna say this i read so far into his articles then i tried it in a vm just quit reading right there because uh, that's not a very good way to test anything other than it just works and i'm sorry this loathing and hatred comes from game developers it's like hey look it launches ship it um <laughs> which we might have experienced before uh if yeah. i had more time to play around with something like this it's like the reason I would look at a distribution like this is like, what are the advantages to try to find that aha bit to it? You get what I'm saying there? Yeah, I do, but I honestly, I have no idea. As much as I try, I can't seem to find the use case for this that, you know, that isn't just the neat factor. That's neat. I, I do want to, uh, I see in chat room right now, 
that Jill just said hi from uh, Linux Linux Con. Con. Hey, Linux Con represent. Well, I, I just wanted to give her a good good on you because she finally got to meet Linus. Oh yes, yeah. I saw that picture. It is a uh, very important milestone in everyone's life. Yep. Um, <laughs> why are we doing this? Okay, this one's yours, buddy. Uh, yeah, this one is technically from Arthurin. Uh, he was the one. See, if you if you give us money, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, you get to submit your own stories, and uh, if it is at all relevant, chances are we're going to be talking about it. And this one is, as much as I, it pains me to admit, Java is still relevant in 2017, and it hurts. It hurts inside, but it is. And the big takeaway from this is that uh, Oracle said, "Yeah, no, we're kind of done with it. We're making it open source." So the community can sort it out. Oh boy. <laughs> no, man. I mean, if you look at it, Java SE has been on a two year release cycle. Um, and once the long delayed SE9 arrives, it's uh, September 21st, uh, Java SE feature releases, they're going to start showing up every six months, starting with <laughs> JDK 9. Mm, so excited. Open JDK builds will be governed by GPL 2, not 3. <laughs> so, hmm. Okay, in they order can to make still the code, sell it if they want. Yeah, uh, well, they're trying to get it out to cloud environments, man. That's what they want to push it out, make it nice, huggy, and friendly. And this totes has nothing to do with like the thousand plus people that not all of were from um, the Solaris division or Sun division. None uh, whatsoever. No, maybe I, I don't know. <laughs> all I know is it's a good thing. It's on GitHub, and uh, I hope I never have to have anything ever to do with it. Says the person who's a. Uh, project this week is setting up a Jitsi server, which will be dealing <laughs> with Java. Um, yeah, very much so. And they say that they're also going to have a long-term support, quote-unquote, version of uh, Java that will have a three-year support life cycle. Java LTS. <laughs> oh, come on, man. It's going to ship with Microsoft Linux. <laughs> Azure. It's Azure. Yeah, it's, it's going to be brilliant. This is the future, man. Why do you hate the future? With that open source version of .NET, hmm. .NET Core. Oh. Um, I kind of ran across this when I was doing the overclocking. And what is it? We're talking about Core Freak. Uh, I like that Core Freak. Giggity. <laughs> it's just a CPU monitoring tool for getting the voltages from individual cores as it's running. I don't know how wicked useful this genuinely is, but it's there. It exists. It's free. It's open source. I, you do have to, what is it? You have to disable the... Um... Yeah, you have to disable the NMI watchdog, mm. which is basically a watchdog that keeps pulling your uh, CPU. Okay. Which there. is also a good idea if you just a little uh, side thing. Uh, if you have a laptop and you want to save some CPU core, uh, some CPU cycles, and some power while you're at it, just disable the NMI watchdog. That's just good. Hmm. Yeah. No, that's a. Uh... I. It's a thing, man. Uh, I just wanted to get the project to plug. Maybe somebody can write in next week. And be like, this is exactly why I would use this for this. And I'm like, cool. And yeah, plenty of screenshots. It does a thing. Uh, Got to be honest, I the, the only time I look at voltage is uh, in the BIOS. Yeah, for the most part, I, if you, um, well, you've managed to get sensors working with the Ryzen board now. Yeah, uh, I've also managed not to make that video that I promised last week. <laughs> so. Go yes, me. yes, that too. But yeah, uh, if you have sensors and you have the working voltage sensors, you will probably end up looking at it. And every now and again, there's that one bit of software that reads the wrong voltage. Uh, like, say, the V-Core on this processor is set to 1.318 volts. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Some uh, software reads it as two point something, and it's like the core. Uh, it's the voltage for the whole socket instead of just the processor V core. So then you have to go track down all the voltages that the motherboard is reporting and say, "Oh, it's that one, right?" 
This one get uh, this uh, bit of software gets away from that for act because it actually gives you the per uh, core voltage. So I say still neat. Um, we did a thing out of curiosity because we we're, tr we're still trying to smack this Ryzen box around and <laughs> see what it can do. I released one of our mezzanine files, our big file, well, not the big big file, but the file that we break down our HD and SD videos from. The one like, hey. that will take me, give or take, three hours to download, yes? Mm, right. Pe Pedro doesn't <laughs> complain about file size until he has to, <laughs> unless it's not a game. Then um, Empty, Mr. Tehan, you know him, a.k.a. the real leprechaun on Twitter. He's mm -hmm. like, why don't we just do it with Handbrake CLI? Because I was like, man, how simple can I make this? Let's do it with a GUI. So, but no, the CLI is a lot easier and quicker. One liner, yeah. <laughs> And so, yeah, I mean, if you want to test your digital EP and you can throw that business in, just grab the file. It is about three gigajoules right at and spit it out. It'll give you a time. Got a little graphic there. Uh, the Ryzen box did it on one of those old, slow, creaky SSD drives in 10 minutes, 35 seconds. The NVMe drive did it in 10 minutes and 34, crushing the SSD. <laughs> one whole second. Well, not even that. Uh, just I, I wanted to make one of those like benchmarks uh, graphs where it was, you know, across the chart for that one second. And it's like, it's clearly yeah. a better. <laughs> Some things we've learned uh, scrolling through this. Uh, this is in Shot Realm Static. You can find it at LinuxTeamCast.com if you want to participate. Everyone's welcome. Is um, Mr. Tehan's stock 1700X did it in 12 With seconds. a 7200 hard drive. Hard That's really? the big killer there. Not really. Yeah. Because <laughs> you saw there's zero difference between NVMe and... Well, it's not zero. <laughs> and it only gets larger uh, if you reduce the speed. That's When you're mm. dealing with something that fast, that's mm. when you start to you're notice... Not transferring enough TD data difference. even to tax a spinning drive, but I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, Atomic is running dual Intel Xeon E5 2670s. Three gigahertz, still beat him. Um, just barely, though. Just barely. Strider just wrote something to try to get attention. Uh, Foxy ran it on an i7-4790. What did he finish in? I don't uh, know. If let's that see. Is not very useful. It's down at the bottom. There we go. 20, 20 minutes. minutes. <laughs> Oof. Uh, <laughs> Arthur that took a while. <laughs> now, this was surprising. Arthur and rocked in with an i7 7700 at 4.2 and 13 minutes. Yep. Wait, no. What, no, it's six... three minutes, 13 seconds. That's not right because here's the 7700 yeah, right the... here. So <laughs> I think he's just mixed up. He got 16 minutes because inertia rocked in with a 7700. That was yeah. wicked overclocked in 13 minutes, 7 seconds. There is, yeah, there is definitely a uh, thing, a uh, digit missing from the real time. But mm -hmm. whatever. <laughs> That's definitely a thing. And uh, hey, man, if you want to participate in that, I think it's just kind of interesting for what you're really looking at and what we're really saying. A $300 processor. If you're doing media encoding... It's pretty yeah, good. No, and you're it, it is uh, when you're doing media encoding. Single-threaded performance is important because each individual encoding job is one thread. It, it's going to spawn on one thread. It's not going to be parallel. But yeah, you, you still need that single-thread performance. But if you can have, like, say, 16 threads working on one job each, you got plenty of You got 16 available threads. threads for $300 and that's something up until yeah. recently Intel's like oh man that's that's good. Now that's you're going to have let's see what was it 1200 for the uh, 841 Yeah, it's like we're going to need at least a grand for that technology. But if you're looking yeah. for something which this is basically what this box does for a living is encoding and rendering. If you're looking for something and it can also play games you know, I know somebody's going to be out there screeching just like but it's 7 frames a second slower in 1080p. It's junk. Like, okay, uh, you go live in your delusional reality. I mean, because it's not right. it's the same reason I bought the 8150 Black Edition is what we upgraded from. I needed something that was really good at encoding and could also technically play games. Ryzen technically plays games a hell of a lot better than the oh, 8150 yeah. ever thought about. 
But yeah, if you get a chance, go pop in there and uh, download the file, run the command, and spit out the results. It's it, it's just fun to see the data and what can and cannot uh, beat a $300 processor in 2017. And uh, that's the thing. So before we go over to the pie, do we have anyone? Because, listen. We have the one. Uh, we got one? We got somebody? Well, uh, we have uh, one and two uh, fine, upstanding cannibal mentions. Oh, mentions. What, what yeah. in the world? Uh, wait. Oh, that's right. See, look. Yes. <laughs> Frank was so excited, he skipped choir practice this week, ladies and gentlemen. He wanted to show up because he's got his wall. You try to take that wall from it, you're going to lose some digits, son. So I suggest yep. not doing it. And don't ask me what's in that's not a guitar in that guitar case. Frank just brought it in with him. I'm just leave it alone. It's but a saxophone. We, hey man, some people picked us up some things off of our Amazon wish list, and that is how you get your name on the fine upstanding cannibal wool. Uh this Jill and Steve, I want to thank them so much. Uh for the phone. That is behind me here. Woo-hoo. Hang on, let me get to that shot. I put it all up. We were talking about that for sure we went live, which I love. Because Pedro that is like, fix, fix this. That corner. It's like my eyes immediately shot up to that corner. No, I was Ew. trying to explain to Pedro. I was like, this is functional. I didn't get this to make it look pretty. I was like, fix it. Do you still have an act? So, it's not about pretty. It's about my OCD. Okay. Um, had, a, had a fun time. Took me took me three days of battling my own OCD, getting everything lined up just so. to I, I had to walk away from this project multiple times. Like, just let it go, man. Um, also want to thank, if I can go back to the Creeper Cam shot, Michael G. Michael G. Mm-hmm. Picked up the light boxes. And uh, back to me. Wait, is that me? I don't know. No, that's Jordan. That's Jordan, man. <laughs> And actually, a little sound dampening curtain for the like mm-hmm. floor to ceiling window down here. That was really nice of him. But uh, Joseph tossed us a little jingle jingle. Oh, yes. Yes, he did. Uh, and not only did he toss us some wet stinkies over the PayPal donato buttons, which you can find at livesgamecast.com forward slash support, um, but he also apparently got a horse. A horse named Pedro. And they asked if he wanted to change his name, and he changed it to Pedro Mateos. I'm flattered. I will never run that fast. And it's a very good looking horse. He posted a picture on Twitter. Very mm-hmm. good looking horse. But uh, yeah, no, I, I I genuinely am flattered. Thank you. Uh, if you want to help us out, keep this business commercial free. This is a Patreon show, so we got to thank all the beautiful party patrons that are making it possible. Maybe that's not your thing. We got the Bitcoin thing. We got the PayPal thing. Everyone ordering through those Amazon affiliate links, man. You know, some of the real MVPs. I mean, seriously, that has add it up to where it's like, ooh, end of the month. Like, ooh, maybe we can buy some new hardware for things. We definitely have that. And I do want to say, where are we at on Patreon? We're not very good at plugging ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, no, we're we not. 105 beautiful people on Patreon bring $208 per Saturday Night Train Wreck. <laughs> so we're doing effectively four shows off that budget. But if you want to get some rewards back, value for value and all that fun stuff, we got access to our Discord. You get your custom RSS feed for our own pre-pre-super shows and that doesn't go out anywhere else. That's an extra hour of content. Access to the show notes and a list keeps on going. If that's your dice and you like supporting Linux, do that. If it's not us, find somebody else and support them because this is the yeah. ongoing mission to, uh, what is it, prostatizing? Prostituting? No, well, that might <laughs> no. be for Saturday night, Pedro. That might be. Okay. <laughs> but enough. until that time, let's dive in into a slice of pie. Indeed. Well, uh, we have a one and two, so to speak, because this is a slice of pie that includes two pies. One that's in the fake Polaroid camera, and another one is in the little cartridge thingy that he's about to pull out which they call a GIF printer, which it's a, it's a lie. It's a box of lies or two boxes of lies because, um, yeah, by print, they just mean that when you record the GIF, it sends you to one of those e-frame, e-picture frames or a dedicated cartridge that you built yourself uh, from a another Raspberry Pi 
and then you can just send over the uh, the GIF you just recorded by, say, Wi-Fi ad hoc, like they're using, Bluetooth, NFC, any type of over-the-air technology at this point could do that. Mm -hmm. But hey, I don't, there, there is one question that this raises. I have a question for you, Pedro. Okay. Why do you hate creators? <laughs> I don't hate creators. The, again, this is one of those things that does, definitely has the need factor. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have an entire section dedicated to neat stuff, and this is it. I, I gotta admit, when you sandwich <laughs> a Pi Zero with uh, the W with a screen, man, that thing looks a lot like a chip all of a sudden, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like, Wait a minute, time but is... no, it's just a, a picture frame that uh, renders GIFs. Now, GIFs, were, they were a big thing in the 90s. Uh, then they died off during the turn of the century. And now they're back in full swing, even though uh, the exact same amount of frames in, a, say, an MP4 video mm -hmm. would take up about 10% of the size and rendering resources. So, what the hell? It's kind of died down, though. I mean, GIF Mageddon was early 2017, and uh, it slowed down. But now we've seen the movement from GIF to GIF V, which is effective. Which is just a fancy name for an MP4, yes. An MP4. <laughs> uh, I laughed. I, I laughed so unnecessarily hard as watching a very wannabe logical uh, discussion of, like, if we could just add audio to the GIFs, then that would really... I was like, do you, do you, do, it's the Abe Simpson just put the hat on and walk back out the door. It's, you, you don't get it, man. <laughs> Absolutely. It's not all there. <laughs> That's, uh, hey, just one little taste of pie this week, though, because uh, we got to get out of here. We are running long. If you want to talk to us, hey, head over to LinuxGameCast.com. Hit the support button. We got all that business there. We do two shows a week. Probably going to be adding some more. Can't tell you about that just right now. Magic code. Plug that in. Ask some questions. Uh, Usually speak ill of our family members if you must. Hey man, uh, just say something. <laughs> that's definitely a thing. And the first person that said something uh, this week was about uh, the Pulse Audios. Oh yes, um, Newell. Uh, so last week we talked about uh, how Pulse Audio released version eleven, and it fixed a few bugs. And um, they said, "Oh shite!" Uh, so that's why my audio volume gets messed up every time I wake up from suspend. Didn't know uh, that was a Pulse Audio bug. I thought it had something to do with the audio drivers glitching somehow. Audio drivers on Linux have been pretty solid for a long time. Audio syncs on Linux, like your Alsas, your OSSs, your Jacks, your Pulse Audios. What was the other one called? Hmm? I don't know. I don't remember. But yeah. Uh, those are where the issue lies. Those are the ones that have everyone, well, all the idiots on Reddit, on the Windows-centric subreddit, saying that audio on Linux sucks. And it can be a hot mess. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> I mean, you, you got to realize, uh, up until like three years ago, closer to four, really, Pulse Audio was junk, too. Pulse Audio oh, yeah. is still not <laughs> the greatest solution in the world, but it, it's manageable now. But now, for what it does, it actually does it really well. Most of the issues come from uh, those uh, bits of software that still use Alsa, and they need that plugin. Mm -hmm. Th that plugin is where ninety nine percent of the issues lie nowadays. There is, but here's the thing: no matter what you're using, if you were just end usering it, and you just need noise to come out of your magic computer box. You're not going to have a problem. Once. Is, yeah, is, it, uh, man, when was the last time a game didn't play audio on Steam? Uh, there was a, uh, See, there was that a, answers my question right there, ladies and <laughs> there gentlemen. There was that really terrible one. It wasn't that long ago, like a month or two at most. And, uh, uh, but yeah, it was a really ter terrible one. You're not missing much by not knowing that. <laughs> yeah, but no, that's definitely a thing, Is uh, especially with Suspend. Which, mm -hmm. like, what be this moon technology? I just started using that a couple of months ago. Never really trusted it. And the box always comes back up fine. But yeah, Pulse Audio, it just <laughs> like shakes up 
my sinks and like throws <laughs> so them back in and pop them control. <laughs> and it just picks random numbers for input volumes. And that's always a lot of times, especially if you got an SSD or anything like that, it's just quicker to reset because then it remembers what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, last but not least, uh, LOIC, Low Orbit Ion Cannon, Bruce Leroy, the man, the myth, the legend, asked uh, something I believe we've all asked ourselves mm -hmm. at some point in our journey through Linux land, and that's, at what point do you decide to wipe your desktop and start over? I'm not talking about distro hopping, just general cruftiness. Well, listen, man, Bruce, if I may call you that, the cruftiness is going to require a cream. Um, <laughs> so you know. Yeah, yeah. The, I think they also make it in pill version, but it's kind of hard to swallow. I'm not that brave. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, honestly, I don't know, uh, because it is a very good question. It's a really a, good question. What was all right? But, I I think a good way to think about this. When was uh, we, we, we do our best to watch our language on this show? When was the last time your box was jacked to the point you just said "f it," nuked it from orbit, and just did a clean install? Uh, okay, that was a few years ago, uh, <laughs> but I got my box to the point where it was jacked up that I started considering that, which was when I had the brilliant idea of enabling the um, hardware enablement uh, mm. thing that mm -hmm. Ubuntu has. It broke everything. So I said, you know what? It can't get 101% broken, so I'm just going to install the Zen kernel, which is what I did. Fixed everything around the Zen kernel. Done. Hmm. We're good. <laughs> Didn't read, uh, although I I came really close to just doing a fresh install because everything was broken. Everything. Uh, when I did the last LTS upgrade, when I went to 1604 on the old box of business, but then there's that thing in the back of your head, and that's why I'm having a hard time remembering the last time because that, 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 that little effort in the back here, it's like, you know, we can fix this, right? You know, you're giving up. We, we, we don't give up. So it took me a day, but I got it back up and running. I know in the early days, like way back when. Um, <laughs> Something wasn't running right. Just yeah. it, just reinstall. <laughs> that, that was it. Learning, well, it's getting an X server up and running and just getting the system completely jacked. And just like, okay, nuke it from orbit. And... These were painful days, ladies and gentlemen, because that meant reinstalling all floppy disk. And um, this yeah, was that definitely sounds painful. It, it was, to your ears mostly. <laughs> it, it was pretty horrifying. It was just said it, you couldn't go anywhere because you had to swap disk out constantly. It was a thing, but hopefully that's definitely going to be a thing with the past. I mean, it's really you really genuinely have to lay into a system to break it. Now, yeah. Um, well. Uh, now that we know as much as we know about Linux at this point, yeah, it takes some doing. You have to basically be doing it on purpose. But if you're new or relatively new to Linux, you will find new and interesting ways to break your box by just looking at it wrong. <laughs> well, and we have experiment. Wayland's good. There's going to be a ton of new. That's how oh, I yeah. look at it. I'm like, hmm, that's going to be fun. Things are going to, you know, Vulcan rolls around. Everything will break. Yeah. <laughs> We'll be back to the good, bad old days. But that's one of the beautiful things about Linux. I, I, I've said this, probably not on this show, but definitely in like one of our pre-pre-shows. Is especially back in the day, I, it still happens now. You're trying to fix problem A, but you learn about problem that, D, C, R, and Q. Like yep, in that depth. That you didn't know were problems, but oh, that's not supposed to do that. It's just huh. the auxiliary stuff that you end up learning on your way to solving that, and you walk yeah. out of the experience like, ha, huh, all right, that's definitely going to be a thing. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, this definitely was a thing. And thank everyone for showing up. If you had a good time, like I said, this is a bit more casual, ironically, than our, the show about video games that we do. That one, That's serious business. <laughs> that's serious yeah yes. but um <laughs> yeah i've been uh been stoned by me on twitters on googles and all that fun stuff pedro mateos pretty much the same thing that's at and accounted for on twitter because someone had already taken pedro mateos on twitter when i registered Aww. i came late to the party i keep telling you i'll sell it back to you 
<laughs> no. Oh. Okay, fine. Credits. Uh, no, it's... Uh, I can't remember uh, if I have... If I ever even bothered to contact the guy that had... Uh, Pedro underscore Mateus. That's the one I wanted. There was already the Pedro Mateus all in more, but no. See, but I counted four. The, the, the one benefit of being Vin... <laughs> Unless you're talking about the diagram, eh, not a whole lot of people. Yeah, you know everyone, you know Vin Diesel, and everyone's trying to get like Vi in. I, I know I, I have never had a problem getting just Vin on social media on anything. Yeah, although I was the the one Pedro Mateus who got the plus Pedro Mateus on Google Plus. Oh, oh. He's so proud. Oh, I got some. I got some really angry Hangouts messages. <laughs> I'm Pedro Mateus. It's like, why do you get to have that name? Uh, you got Pedro underscore Mateus. What are you complaining about? I wanted to. Some... Okay. <laughs> okay, let's get this exported to the exporting places. I just hate having to install a Steam Underwind. Yeah. Yeah. And the simple fact that if you start, if you want to play that game you have installed uh, in Steam Underwind, while you still have uh, the Linux version of Steam running, they don't like each other. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm going to be honest. It's been... I, I, didn't, I don't have Wine installed in this box. I do. <laughs> You came over here to install. I want to kick you in your taint if you've installed wine on my box. <laughs> Just be glad you never gave me the SSH credentials. It's going to be the scary thing. It's like, hey, Jordan, here you go. Let's see what type of... <laughs> okay, what did you do? <laughs> Miss that FS tab? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, FS... Oh, learning le learning about the... um. <laughs> FS tab, Exorconf, uh what was the other one? What was uh, that other? Oh, Grub uh, or FIFO or Lilo. Yeah, no, Grub. <laughs> I consider the, Grub fancy uh, and Grub easy. Grub CFG, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just the entire boot process. You, you become intimate with that unless you just like, all right, <laughs> format, redo it. Yep. That's uh, kind of falls down like the optional one, man. It's no longer the pre-show, is it? I don't think it's the install process specifically, Strider. Just saying. Because yes, Lutris does make install installing Weinstein very simple. As in, you literally put it your username, your password, and your uh, Steam Guard code, and that's it. They got Steam for Linux, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Steam for Linux still doesn't have Dark Souls. Oh, damn. I guess I won't be playing Dark Souls. <laughs> uh, I like Dark Souls. I do. It, it's one of those games that at first I kind of didn't like. But once I managed to wrap my head around exactly how it works and the logic behind everything, I like tucked the stuff I didn't like into that, oh, okay, I was just being an idiot. All right. So I started playing the game with that in mind, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. Oh, Trugs, I just got your message. It could be today, man. It depends on if who brings it. Which, yeah. Yeah. There's always Salt and Sanctuary, but I've already beaten Salt and Sanctuary five different times. <laughs> one, of, one of which was on stream. <laughs> And at RamFS, uh, and at RamFS is good for speeding up your boot process. And if you have something that you need to load before, say, the X session starts, or anything in specific that needs to start early on in the boot process, and at RamFS is really good for that. Mm. But outside of that, I don't know, man. It's just 
the true true of having almost 500 Linux games. Mm-hmm. I have more than that. <laughs> it's I, I what I'm trying to say is this: when I had seven Linux games. Yeah, when <laughs> when the beta first came out, it was like, oh, you haven't been invited, oh, but you can totally, oh, oh, you you totally start it by just going Pedro, directly Pe- to the Pe- library. Pedro, I'm talking about a decade before Steam came out, when I had seven Linux games. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then I would spend some time in wine. Because, hey, man, I wanted to play that eighth game. Um, it usually didn't work right, but... You know, uh, Wine X back in the day before they called it Sedega or whatever, they've changed it. How fast is the new box of business booting? Uh, uh, roughly the same speed as Jordan's. <laughs> we can't tell because our UHD monitors cycle through like five inputs. So four seconds. It takes longer for the monitor to come on than for the bot to books. Yeah, the box the is bot to books. <laughs> Das books. <laughs> the bot to books. Not the box to boot. The bot to books. <laughs> it is uh, pretty good. Uh, I mean, it's My fast laptop? enough. I'll, I'll say this. It's fast enough now. To, there's no point in using suspend. I just cut it off. Cut it back on. I, uh, my laptop takes a whole of um, 5.9 something seconds. It's like... And it's a 1.6 gigahertz uh, dual core CPU off of a SATA SSD. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's like, look. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, Steve I will find you the actual boot time if you want me to. I'm not going to do it right now, but I'll, I'll go look yeah, it up. System D at Elias will give you right up until the um, login screen, basically. I don't even know if okay. I can do it over this here. This one is getting slow, apparently. 14.977 seconds. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I'm curious enough to do this. Dirt, uh, dirt, dirt, dirt. Let's get over here. Accessory. Come on. Alt F2 term? No, it's funky with the two video cards, man. I. The terminal I have to open up on this monitor mm-hmm. is LX terminal. Well, that's even easier. <laughs> Alt F2 LX term. And I'm also trying to do it with one hand. <laughs> I have been doing a great deal many things all my life with just one hand. Yeah, you also have feeling in both of your appendages, too. Yes, and one of them is missing 90%. Is so this, you don't... Are we really honestly doing a... Hey, Pedro, part? guess what? I can't operate by feel. I have to look at everything I'm doing. <laughs> are we honestly having the cripple fight right now? No, you are trying to win an argument that I don't care about. <laughs> is what we're doing Apparently right you now. you do. <laughs> there. See, look, we were able to provide you with fun and entertainment while well, I was doing We that. managed to burn a couple of seconds while Ven got that out of the way. So start it finished in 3.6, uh, so right around. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Overwatch patches are being merged in staging. Took them long enough. Has Overwatch, what's the... Uh, online viewership for overwatch these days has that kind of died around or is it it was never really good because overwatch is from what i hear very fun to play horrible to watch because there's particle effects everywhere people can't see a goddamn thing if they're just watching has a player base held on i think so it's actually uh both overwatch and paladins have increased in terms of a uh, player base Hmm. They're basically the same game, so. <laughs> but yeah, PUBG still winning. I, I hope they're smart enough to just like let it run for another year. And just like, peace. And <laughs> We're out. Right. And not try to arc it up. 
Uh, you and me both, Strider, because the new is not an issue for wine anymore, but easy anti-cheat. If the developers want, they can F up a wine, uh... Well, they can F up the game, even starting with wine. And they didn't have to. All they have to do is uh, go to easy anti-cheat and spawn the wine-specific binary that it checks for. That's it. That's all they need to do, and they refuse to do it. So, they can eat a bag. I don't know, man. It's all moving to mobile. Oh yeah, I've been hearing that talk since, uh, let's see, when did Android uh, 2.3 come out? 2012? Well, when it comes yeah. to, I mean, because there's like, oh, you're not a real gamer, you're a casual gamer. <laughs> and like, yeah, but that casual gaming uh, is the largest market. It is. By like, like well, PC gaming's huge. And you know that that's the sun. This is Beetle Guys, is the mm -hmm. casual mobile gaming market compared to the it's sun. People who play games uh, on PC, then think about the fact that everyone has a, or almost everyone has a smart device in their pocket, at least one. And anyone who's never thought of that before, quit watching the show. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no. There's probably more people with a smartphone in their pocket then there are people who play games on their computers. Possibly. Yeah. <laughs> Steam to come to the Play Store? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, when is Lutris ever working? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, trying to figure out the user interface of Lutris is a game in itself. That should be a Patreon goal for Loot Strider. Mm -hmm. Hire a UI UX developer. Maybe then people will actually go, oh, hey, actual goals. <laughs> Let's give them money. And now I got room for an entire wall green screen. We can fly you out here. We can set it up. We can shoot it. Oh, we'll make a great production video for it. And I, I don't know. I still got to put the big green screen up. That's, jeez, man. Sorry, again, for like the two people who are like, tell me how to do this MSI thing. If you just email me, I'll tell you exactly how to do it. But <laughs> I've installed it a couple of times, steve -O, because uh, well, oh, last time I, I was going to install like the Quake 3 BFG edition. Mm -hmm. Quake 3 or Doom 3? Doom 3. Doom 3. Uh, and I, I was like, oh, Lutris is a good quick way because as opposed to using the Steam command line to it's setting that up. I, like, I don't want to deal with that. I just do Lutris and Lutris just ate shite. Couldn't. <laughs> like, you know what? <laughs> Wipe it. Nuke it from orbit. Yeah, Quake 3 BFG edition, man. <laughs> uh, I've been playing, uh, that's actually what I've been playing a lot of is uh, Quake 2. Because I was trying the, uh, I was trying the the path tracing build of Y Quake Two, and yeah, it's it's great. I get a whole of twenty five FERPs with all of the uh, bling enabled in Quake Two with the parallax tracing enabled. So with a ten eighty, mind you. Mm. So it's 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 demanding. <laughs> I'm not even going to try it with my old crusty 980. It it renders... Like, the, the CPU barely sees any use. It's Quake 2. Uh, but everything is done on the, the GPU. The, that it is going, I'm using 100% and I can only put out 25 frames a second. No! I still can't get superposition to run on. At 1080p? No. No, no superposition to run, period. Uh, you should be able to run it at 4K. All right. Keep telling yourself that. I know, because when I did the... Um, 
Let me so see what my tailor would charge me for a Captain Obvious outfit. Pedro, I'm going to need those <laughs> measurements. <laughs> I'll send them to you in an email. But when I did the benchmark of the Kratos, uh, I tried to run full screen uh, at 720p on that 1080p panel that it had. Mm -hmm. It would crash, much like it does for you. Oh, it crashes at 720p, full screen, windowed, 1080p, full screen, windowed, 1440p, full screen, windowed, both video okay, cards, two video cards, issue that separate X screens, Cinerama enabled. Is there anything? And you have another issue, and this was before you had Cinerama enabled, so you have another issue. You didn't, you oh, didn't I don't have Cinerama enabled right now. <laughs> yeah? But I had enabled it for troubleshooting, man. Oh. No, no, <laughs> you don't do that. Yeah, I did. I, I used Win. I did every possible config. I tried diff I tried Unity for fuck's sake to see if I mean I, I. And the problem is, is it will not generate a crash log. Do you at least get the menu to pick the? Oh yeah, uh, yeah, no. I mean, it starts yeah. up, gives me all the options, then it jacks up the primary resolution of whatever monitor i'm running it on and calls their thing that's really odd because that behavior is when you're not running it at the native resolution or a resolution that the pedal supports because it does that it actively crashes if you try to start it in full screen in a resolution that your monitor doesn't support it that is an issue that they still haven't fixed but if you try to run it in a window it usually works mm -hmm. or at least it does on my end not over here in Vinland, but honestly, I give two Fs about it until it adds Vulcan support because OpenGL renders are irrelevant. Ooh. I wish they were irrelevant. I really do. In, so they're in, still not. In my <laughs> you kind of need. World, you still kind of need OpenGL. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. No, I need to go order dinner. From from where are you ordering said dinner from again? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the flying walk the the flying walk yes <laughs> we'll just leave you with that ladies and gentlemen thanks for showing up we'll be back next week tune in tomorrow and I'm going to see if I can talk Jordan into starting Sam mm -hmm. we'll bring that it won't be an official like episode one but it'll be a uh, let's it see it'll be this. a good test yeah <laughs> We'll send out notifications to all the patrons on Discord and the likes to let you know how you can join in if we can make all the stars align. And yes. that'll be a thing. And Saturday, we'll be back for LGC Weekly. All the gaming goodness. All right. We uh, love you a long time. Dine fire. Bye-bye.